It appears first in the list, but in memory it's actually the last one. And when the compiler is running and looking for words in the dictionary, it starts at the bottom and works all the way up to the top. Thus it will find our new version of OnePlus first, before it finds the one in ROM. So hang on, Chef. Uh, so now if I do 100 OnePlus dot, that means put 100 on the stack, add 1 to it and display it, and we get 101. But you can do crazy things if you want. So I can redefine plus and make it do subtraction. So 100 plus 10. Whoops. Gives us 90, which would really confuse some people. Would that have repatched the OnePlus as well? No, no, because I haven't used OnePlus. That's what I, that's yeah, I've but the OnePlus was defined as OnePlus. Yeah, but we, <coughs> we defined something called Plus. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, 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 that's what Roger said. It says you've used one space plus to define one plus. Yes. Um, and the answer to your question is. Actually, no, it won't, because it's, it's, it's compiled a reference to an entry in the dictionary. But you can go back through and patch, yeah. but often... Um, yeah, sorry, Trev. Can you, obviously, when you've done, done cold, it resets everything back to, uh, to normal. Is there any way of actually putting in, say, like some predefined words that you've already like, got to... Like, <laughs> wheels of uh, uh, of teams that can sort of reload in so you have to read the type plans again. Yeah. Uh, it's got a <coughs> fourth is uh, designed fourth was designed in, in uh, I think Charles it was designed by an American called Charles Moore and I think it matured in around nineteen seventy one but he'd been working on it for a number of years and it was actually designed for memory constrained systems, as they all were in those days. And he was um, uh, frustrated with the um, edit, compile routine of coding in those days. Yeah. Don't forget, in those days, if you're writing code in Fortran, you're not typing it at a terminal, you're cutting it on punch cards. And if it doesn't work, you just got to back to the drawing board. And he just thought there must be a better way. And he came up with fourth. And fourth is designed to be completely self-hosting and self-contained with no underlying operating system whatsoever. And in fact, this code that you're looking at now uses um, no operating resources inside the TI system. The only thing it does use is the key scan routine. And I might change that. I might put my own in there. Um, <clears throat> What he did, he, he produced a system called the block system um, and what it does is it takes, um, in, this, in this implementation, it takes a disk file on, on a disk, it can be on a hard disk or floppy disk, it doesn't, the system doesn't care, um, and divides it into 1K blocks. In those blocks you can put source code and you can copy these files, you can make them as big as you want, um, up to one megabyte. You can have 1,024 blocks in a single file, but you can have as many of these files as you want. And in there you put your source code, and uh, you can just load them by saying, for example, um, uh, I'll, actually I'll reset it because we've done some funny stuff with words. So if I want to load block 10, I just do that and it's, it's loading, it's loading uh, blocks 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 uh, from disk. Um, it was quite quick when you consider it's, it's, it was compiling that as it was loading it. It's not, com it's not loading compiled object code, it's loading source code and compiling it. And it loaded it quicker than it loads a DF80. Um, and then I just hit go. <laughs> if it was XB, it wouldn't be running yet. It'd still be thinking about it. But it's pretty, it's quite instant and you can change it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
nice little staff here. And the this is all coded in fourth. There's no assembler in this demo. It's pure fourth. Um, you can break it just like a normal program. How many spots do you double? Thirty-two. It's the same thirty-two. Yeah. Yeah, hard to really find. You get. Is it twenty-eight in extended basic? Yeah. Yeah, you get all thirty-two here, and you have access to uh, what is it in basic? ASCII thirty-two to one five six. One five six. Here you've got access to zero to two five five. Got all of them. Uh, you've got, you know, char, hchar, um, they're all in there, vchar, no. sprite, locate, um, collision detection, it's all there. Where possible I've tried to use the same words as extended basic, but the way they work is different of course because you've got to put the values on the stack first. Um, but if I wanted to... Uh, is it, yeah. That was the sprite data you were seeing at the end of the sprite table in VDP RAM. Uh, you can list a block directly from from disk. So that's that's the first block of source code for that sprite demo. Um, which looks fairly scary, <coughs> maybe, but it, but it isn't. Um, and what you see there, as you when you tell it to load a block, it simply starts at the at the top. And compiles it as it goes, but some words, as I mentioned before, some words are what are known as immediate words, and even though you're compiling, some words override that action and actually make the system do something immediately. Uh, one such word is, is that, which means load the next block. Okay. That looks, that, that's a word, this is just an executable word, because there's no restriction on, on what a word can be. It just can't have a space in it. That actually means to load the next block and get on with compiling it. Um, you can see here we set up some constants. We've got small star, medium star, big star. These are constants with, the, with their ASCII codes. I think, that, I think they're the ASCII codes with the sprites that I'm using. Something like that. Um, there's a built-in editor. So if I want to it's fine to list like that on the screen if I just want to see something quickly, but what if I want to change it? Um, if you've done any assembly language programming, you'll be used to um, re rebooting at this point. You'll switch the machine off, you'll switch it back on, you'll load Funnel Web or you'll load the editor in the editor assembler system, wait for it to load from disk, then you'll load your source code, then you'll edit it, save it, load the assembler, assemble it, if it doesn't have any errors, maybe it will work, <laughs> but maybe not. Here, if I want to change that, I just type 10, edit, and now we're in the editor. Um, and it's a, it's a windowing, because we're, in, because we're in 40 column mode, it's a windowing editor like, of the sort you'll be used to. Um, all, um, all blocks in fourth are 16 lines down by 64 characters wide. If you do the math, that's 1,024 bytes. So he was clever. He thought he, he thought all of this. He thought of all this stuff in the year I was born. So hats off to the guy. And uh, yeah, you can just type away, make your edits. You have um, let me. Uh, is it, uh, Remember my own. Uh, yeah, Control O will take us back a block, so I can put some code in there. And I don't know. Let's let's do another loop here. Do I don't. For example, hit um, F9. Is it? Oops. F9 takes us out of the editor. Um, we just loaded block 9 there from disk, which is empty, and we put some code in it, but that code is not yet stored on the disk. It's buffered in VDP RAM, so if we flush it, now it's written to disk physically. The system has a, 
I guess a cash. Um, again, the guy did all this stuff in the 70s because in those days loading something from a magnetic storage device was expensive in terms of transfer time, loading time. So he, he implemented a cache system which I've copied. So although I flushed it to disk, I could, you know, if on a real system I could remove the floppy now and that code is on disk. If I load that block which causes it to be compiled, it knows it's in memory so it will use the memory copy. And it knows that if I change the block, it knows that the block in memory is more up to date than the version on the disk, so it will flush it when it gets the next opportunity, which, which is when it runs out of buffers. Uh, so if I go 9 load, done. And I can now run that word, which I've just built. If I make a mistake, There's a, we've, we've defined a word called Fred, which calls a word called blah, but that word does not exist. Uh, and I can now, uh, I'll, I'll flush it to disk, and I will now uh, load it. We'll get, a, we'll get a, a warning that test has been redefined, but it also tells us that blah is not found in Fred in block 9. I could simply type 9 edit and go into block 9, or I could type where Fred edits and it, oh, it finds it <laughs> and takes us to the right the right block. We've got the uh, the standard uh, yeah. I've got to remember my own key presses because they're a bit different to funnel web um, which is, is it F2? Yeah, so we've got insert mode and uh, overwrite so that's as you would expect that's as you would expect, and you've got one called nudge, which I, I might remove, but that that moves the whole block forward in front of the cursor. But I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm not convinced of that, if that's useful at the moment. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, you've got um, you've got copy, so sometimes when you, uh, when you are adding code to a block, imagine this is a, in fact if I go to um, this one, if I, if I wanted to add some code here, uh, I can uh, insert insert a line when I find out which one it is. Can you see it? Is it F3, F7, Control I? Moves that up a line. And I, but you soon run out of space. You're going to start pushing stuff off the bottom. So you can actually um, copy, and then if I want, I can go back a block and I can paste in. So I can I can move if I want it works on a line by line basis. So if I want that line there, control C, go back a block, <coughs> control V, you copy and paste. It's about as featured an editor as I as I thought I could get away with inside with the memory constraints. I think this editor's about two and a half K, something like that. Um, so yeah, any any more questions? Right. Your editor, uh, you have uh, uh, taken uh, of the uh, idea in uh, Warstar. Uh, I remember Warstar mode and Mesodos, uh -huh. your editor. But is a uh, yo, not it not that it exists uh, this editor in another uh, fourth language. This editor is, is written in assembly language. Okay. You've yeah. written it, yeah. Yeah. That was about a day of hardcore coding. It's I, I code in fits and starts, actually. I, I've realized over the years that I start thinking about doing something. That's normally a dangerous sign. It normally means it'll end up being 